Hello everyone, Searches here from Fragmix, and today we are going to talk about the good, bad, and damn right terrible of the Walking Dead survival instinct. So let's jump right on in because we have a lot to cover. The first thing you see when you enter the game is the menu and the iconic theme music of the Walking Dead series, and everything looks like it's going well so far. And then the music loops, and you quickly become fed up with the theme, so you decide to jump into the settings, which are, for the lack of a better word, abysmal. It's clear straight from the settings that this game is a terrible PC port. Let's take for example the audio settings. It's literally a blank screen besides two options, volume and subtitles. Yes, sure, you don't need any real options in audio, but it would be really nice to be able to differentiate game sound from character audio sound at the very least. The video settings are a slight improvement, however they still rather limited, again making it feel like a rather rushed PC port. You have your basics, even allowing you to select the graphics device, which surprisingly it got wrong. I was using an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 675M, and all it says is Intel. I don't think so. Now the only real options that are up to the standards of PC games these days are the controls, allowing you to select between keyboard and mouse or gamepad, and it gives you the option to map each key to different functions. So now that you are finished messing around with the settings, it is time to go into the game. Now at the beginning of the game, you are deer hunting. I'm going to quickly ruin the first 5 minutes of the game. You don't play as the main character yet, the character you do play as quickly becomes attacked by zombies, gets bitten and falls to the floor. Then the others come along, dispatch the zombies, and barely even hesitate to shoot him in the head. Now, here's two issues with that. For one, they claim to have no idea about the infection, so how exactly did they know to shoot him in the head instantly? Or do they simply have no morals and no thoughts about the possibility of being arrested and jailed for murdering someone? Surely they would think, hmm, let's get this guy to hospital so we can save his life. And secondly, the guy who shot him was bitten himself, and no one seems to care. They just continue as if everything is okay despite shooting the last guy in the head before he could turn. It just feels very inconsistent. And the inconsistencies continue throughout the entire game. I won't ruin any more of the story, but it is extremely hard to become immersed in a world that makes no sense whatsoever at every single turn. Well, I guess that's if you can even complete the game because of mouse acceleration. If you are unaware of what this is, it's an annoying little feature which automatically adjusts mouse sensitivity pretty much whenever the hell it feels like it. Oh, you're entering a building? Allow me to make your mouse extremely fast. Oh, you're switching between a melee weapon to a gun? Wouldn't it be hilarious if the settings were so damn high you can't even aim? Now, I can't say the game is completely terrible. They do have some very impressive features. They are just not implemented as well as they could have been. One of the features I'm very happy about is the ability to send fellow survivals off on missions to gather fuel, food, and ammo. Whilst doing this, you have the ability to give the survivors weapons that you have found, and this decreases the risk of their scavenge mission. However, the first time I gave my survivor a hammer, and then switched out for a gun, the risk factor didn't even change, which was very disappointing. Most of the time, you don't even want to give your survivors weapons, because they die randomly, and that weapon is lost. Another feature that I really liked was the fact that you had to keep fuel in your car, and there's a chance you could randomly break down and have to scavenge nearby areas for fuel or replacement parts. This would have been almost fantastic if your car didn't conveniently break down next to a gas station or garage every single time. And to top it all off, I've broken down several times now in a row, and it's reused the same map every single time. And this has basically made the breakdown and supply gathering sequences extremely dull and repetitive. Talking about things being extremely dull, let's talk about combat. There are three main ways you can go about dispatching zombies. You can either sneak up on them and assassinate them without much hassle, or you can stab your way through them, or lastly, you can just shoot your way through them. Now, each of these has their own issues. 
Assassinating a zombie is quick and effective, however there are very few animations for assassinating a zombie and this becomes quite dull very quickly and it is also very easy to hit a zombie back, quickly move behind them and assassinate them, even when they have already seen you. And this quickly becomes the preferred method of dispatching them because of the straight up melee combat. Now in melee combat, to kill a zombie with a knife, you have to hit it in the head four times before it will drop, each hit displaying a very dull stun animation where the zombie won't be able to do anything until the next hit. That being said, later on in the game, it is possible to get a sledgehammer, although slower, it can kill zombies in one hit to the head, so by this point in the game, I'm not even bothering to stealth anymore. I just run up to them, smash them in the face, and move on to the next zombie, very quickly and effectively running through each area. And lastly we have the guns, there's really not much use for these, if you use them it seems like every single zombie in the map comes straight for you. Don't get me wrong, this is a good thing, this is true to the Walking Dead series, gunshots and loud sounds are going to attract the zombies by the masses. However, this is where the issue arises. It's all running good wanting to shoot the zombies as they come at you in hordes, but the very second you try aiming that gun, the game decides it's going to use its mouse acceleration to screw you over. For some reason there is a huge difference between mouse acceleration on melee weapons compared to ranged weapons. Another insanely annoying thing in the game is when a zombie grabs you when there are at least 10 other zombies surrounding you. So. You have this zombie grabbing you and trying to bite you, and you have a little mini action where you have to try and stab them in the face to get them off you. Fun, right? No. Now, his friends just kind of stand around admiring the zombie hug going on, and they wait patiently in line for their turn to grab Dao as though he's giving out free hugs all day and the sequence just loops and loops until every zombie is dead or you are groped so much that you just drop to the floor. Now let's talk about your fellow survivors. These guys suck. They die at the most inconvenient time and the storyline behind each character is so terrible that you care more about the gun they lost rather than the fact that they died. No matter what you do, you can't fit them all into your vehicle. You have a flatbed truck, yet you can only take two survivors with you until you get a different vehicle and can change it to three survivors. To top it off, the whole storyline for the game is so badly laid out that you just begin to mindlessly drone through the levels which are incredibly linear. In fact, each map is literally laid out as a maze, preventing you from exploring in the slightest. And the second you do try to explore, you get teleported back with some smart ass survivor going, what are you after it isn't over there? How do you know? Are you the one risking your life to find a radiator hose for this stupid car? No! Don't tell me where I can and can't go. Overall, is this game worth the money? Most definitely not. It seems like they wanted to capitalise on the success of the Walking Dead series and did it in a very rushed and cheap manner creating a very disappointing and uninteresting game. I feel like it has a good concept, which are very poorly laid out, and if they put more time and effort into this game, it could have potentially been very impressive, but unfortunately, we are left with this disappointment. Thank you everyone for watching, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know who your favourite Walking Dead character is in the comments down below. Goodbye. Shut up! Please just shut up! You are so annoying!